Hello everyone who may be watching, it's Paul here, and instead of doing some of the usual uh, blender stuff I goof around with, I figured I would uh, do a little bit of drawing stuff, uh, showing how I do some draws, so. Nothing too fancy, this is like a time killer kind of thing for me, because uh, at work I often have like little periods of short breaks where it's like hurry up and wait. Since I'm doing my job driving, I just pretty much sit around for like 10 or 15 minutes, but those gaps in time are caused by having to arrive a little early on schedule, because the extra time is necessary because of traffic and stuff, so sometimes I end up getting it early, I just end up waiting. So I just kind of doodle on scraps of paper, and since doodles aren't really much important, I found something to do to kill the time, and that's draw pattern kind of things, but in my case it's a specific thing, I like drawing not work of all things, it just seems kind of, I don't know, it's neat. <laughs> you get really neat patterns, so I figured I'd show how I do it. But there's pretty much different types of knot work, but mine is pretty basic. And basically you have part that goes over and a part that goes under. And the most basic is like a two strand thing. Where you have over and under like so. And then this one would go over and you just kind of repeat that. That's all neat and stuff but that works okay. <laughs> you just kind of repeat that kind of pattern. You know. The one that goes over is always over, and the one that goes under. But there's also like a more braided pattern, and I tend to do the open patterns. You can actually tighten them up so they're like, you know, closed patterns, or whatever. You know, where there's no gap inside. Well, it's hard to explain, but you know, it's like no gap. That kind of pattern, but I like to draw the more open stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Shooter might be a name for it. Also, like this network stuff is kind of old, you know, it's been around uh, since the Iron Ages, and most people think of it as a Celtic thing or a Nordic thing, and I guess most European cultures would consider it a Celtic thing, but there's also like Perth, Japan, where they do network, and, and the Asian cultures, like, uh, I want to say China and even like Tibet, Nepal and stuff, some of them do like various network. And I guess there's variations even like Middle Eastern and stuff, so. It's not just the European thing, you know, most people think it is. I know it's probably the most well-known kind, but not to worry about that. But you can do the braided network, which I start out drawing like this kind of pattern. Which is alright, just like a three strand braid. And then what you do is stuff like this. It's pretty like it's pretty much a simple rule set. It's almost like a logical puzzle kind of thing for me. <laughs> because of all the neat things, but it starts out with some rule like this, and this is for a braided. And I usually just draw the outline of it first. It's like I found it's easy to follow a curve with a simple pattern and then you expand the pattern. So, you first started out with the V's like I did there, but then you expand the pattern out. And then you draw the over-under parts by bridging gaps like so. And you end up with a braided network. And this would be like a three strand. And then you have a strand there. And you have a strand here. Yeah, three strands, right? The same thing carries on the other side. I'm not going to worry about it too much. But I kind of like the four stranded patterns, just the ones I like drawing the most. Because they're kind of flexible in what you can do with them. So, four strand is you start out with a trail of diamonds. Kind of like how I did the views for the braided, if you were just watching, obviously. You start out with a trail of diamonds. And you do the V's. Like so. <laughs> this is just a beginning though. It gets even more fancy. And this isn't like the really fancy braid work. I know there's more stylized stuff. This is kind of a basic pattern. 
but just by expounding what you do with the pattern, you can get really neat stuff going on. And that's usually what I do, like, when I have a lot of time just to sit around, I'll just start building these fancy patterns. And I truncate it like this usually, so... But there's another way to do it too, I guess. Uh, I'll try to get it when I get over there. And you do this kind of stuff. This is like a four cross pattern. Versus an open knot pattern. I know mean, there's a lot more stuff to it, but this is basics. <laughs> Basic method of making networks. I know I'm not doing it perfectly here. When I have time, I really get intricate, but. Because, you know, I'm sitting around waiting with nothing else to do, and I'm just sketching on paper. Yeah, you just do networks like this. It's real simple. You can see it flows uh, over under things, so you could actually braid or tie a knot like this. I mean, it's physically possible with a rope or string. You just kind of have to think out what you're doing with the pattern, and it will do this. Okay, so this one does, I don't know, like clover leaf shape at the end, but there's also another way to do the end, if I can remember right, it is, maybe it's like a big loop thingy. Let's see when I get to it there. Uh, you know what it is, it's like a big loop and another loop over it. Eh, for me. <laughs> Hope they didn't go in the mud. Pardon me, I got stupid cold that's been going around. I think it's that whatever that Terror Bear 68 crap or whatever that is. It's been going around. <laughs> I don't know, it's supposed to be like a thing for kids, but apparently I've probably got the stupid thing, so. It's annoying. But, oh yeah, here's the way to do it. You leap this one over. I know there's another way to truncate it there. I guess you do two loops. Something like this. I guess this works. Like an inside loop and an outside loop. Or some variation of that, but I usually like doing this style on this end here, right here. Rather than something like that. But it gives you, like, options. There's no set way to do it. And so, the diamond thing you just saw was fairly simple. I'm gonna... Draw a guideline real quick. I'm gonna do it in a different color. See, light blue or something. So this is like a guideline, and you can do sweeping paths, and then draw the diamonds following the path. So that that was like the starting pattern, just to get an idea how it goes. But the thing I do with diamonds is you draw them, and this, and this is where you're starting to get the idea how intricate it can get, <laughs> because then you're curving and swooping and looping and you can make circles and geometric shapes. And it's just real simple basic rules. Like I said, it's like almost math and geometry, but it's more like a logic puzzle kind of thing. But it's art. <laughs> but since it follows a simple rule set, it's kind of neat. Then you can show your friends this crazy knot thing you drew and you'd be like, wow. <laughs> you know it's simple and you just kind of, this is the way I do it, I know there's no exact way, but doing the outlines is the fastest, easiest way I've found. You notice they all flow the same kind of way, the ones on the inside go this way, and the ones going over the top go that way, and the ones going under the bottom 
follow through so you're getting the over under thing and you have to be consistent with it so it's just like time or real not if all the same pattern and now it's fairly simple you just can follow curves do leaps and circle it around on itself that way just by making your diamonds follow the trail but now I'm going to uh, do another thing here and this time I'm going to show crossings so you can do T crossing What's going on with the colors here? Oh. Yeah, I'm in linear dodge. I want normal mode. I wonder why it's being weird on me. Alright. You can do T crossing, or you can do regular crossing. But you can also do various geometries. Which I'll show you. And it's pretty neat. Once you get the rolls down, it's possible to do all kinds of fancy stuff. And I figured that would be neat to, sh to share it with you guys. So it's kind of like a metal puzzle, but it's artistic. And you can have fun with it. <laughs> By following these different patterns, you can build really complex shapes and patterns in your network doodles. At least I doodle it. People are like, what are you doing on network? I don't know, I just find it. It's Kenny Coleman. <laughs> so, if we do the diamonds again, I'm gonna try to see if I can space them right. Sometimes it helps to space them out at the ends and then fill in the pattern. So, and then you diamond out the pattern like so. For square crossings, you just keep sort of like consistently with the diamonds. You notice how when I was doing the, this area, it was V's. Like around the outline, it's V's here, right? So it's diamonds and these little V shapes. But when you have a crossing, you fill it in with one extra diamond, like so. An extra diamond, like so. And you'll see why in a moment. It's kind of cool. But you can actually build like alphabets or, like I said, other geometric shapes. All based on this concept. <laughs> it's really neat. Just drawing in diamonds. And you're nuts. And you're like, whoa, what is this? And so So what happens is you go here following the that pattern. When you go here it goes straight across. And it goes over. Straight across and over. Building your outlines, you know. I guess I should fill that in, but I'm not going to worry too much. I'm giving you a general idea so you can see how it's doing. Chris, how well you practice it is up to you. Yeah, it's a really rough and sloppy radio. But it's pretty simple. Like I said, it follows a simple rule set. But it gets really intricate just following it. Well, it's so sim stupid simple, but it follows, I guess, it's, it's a form of typology, just like 3D stuff, but it's kind of two-dimensional, because you're working over and under, or it's like a, has to do with topology of knots, maybe, I don't know, but you go over, under, this one goes over, 
this one goes over. It goes under. This one goes over. <laughs> yeah, it's so rough. But you get the idea, it follows through. Just by following that simple rule. And now you can see these crossings that I mean diamonds have connect over. So now it's just it's just like you're weaving these changes in direction. And if you had enough time to think it out and maybe you used to like a board with pins on it to pull your knots around, you could probably weave something based on this. <laughs> like macrame or something? I don't know. You could really do some cool stuff, I'm sure, if you had the time and put the thought into it. Possible to make nets or rope ladders or who knows what, just following this concept. It really is kind of neat. Over and under, and you can see the pattern just follows through and it connects and closes. In a way that makes the knots actually weave through each other. It's a weaving thing. It's not just like a knot thing, it's a. I don't know, it's like textiles and what they do. But you see, it just. It's a pattern, so you can change the directions. Your network pretty simple. Okay, so now what do you do for these, like, odd shaped things that aren't like regular squares or anything? But anything that's maybe a triangle or a three way or pentagram or hexagon or whatever. Geometric shapes other than uh, T's or crossings. So how do you do those? So what you do is you draw your shape for your crossing, which is like a three-way crossing. It will be a triangle for a Y, and for this it will be a pentagon, five-way, and the other ones will be hexagon, heptagon, octagon, septagon. I guess I don't know. <laughs> you know, all the, all the different polygons, and guns, or whatever you want to call them. And you just trace them out like so. And then you fill in the diamonds. This is why I find the four across most versatile, because I haven't really figured out a way to do these kind of crossings with the three stranded braids. And I guess you could do it with the doubles, but it might be a little bit boring. I don't know. I just find this most visually interesting. So you can do like snowflake patterns and weird stars and stuff by following these rules. And then for these breaks here, you fill in with the shape here. It just pulls across. It's a bit stretched, but it pulls across. So you stretch it out. Stretch out there. <laughs> Basically, you just fill in that area around the triangle and that area around it. You stretch it out. And this gives you flexibility to change your network patterns, connect them, and bridge them, or whatever. In really unique ways. <laughs> I don't know if the old networks have this, I'm sure some do. I'm sure somebody else has done this before. It's not the most readily obvious thing, but... And you just draw it out. And I did some really intricate stuff. I don't know if I'll link it to this video. I, I might do it later, but... My current example is I have a photo, because I don't have a working scanner at the moment. So I took a photo, but there's just the lighting's uneven, so I can't get the line work clean. Because one half will be too dark, and the other half's too bright. It's a pain in the butt to color correct with the gradient going across. So then you just under, over, under. This one like so. That one goes over, so this one goes over. And under like so, so it stretches out, and this one comes over here. <laughs> and it's a fairly simple rule for network. Since that one goes over, 
like that. And then, yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> It's just like a cool network mode if they and you can just extend it out. So that's your three way crossing, so a five way is similar kind of thing. The little diamonds going out, radiating out. Once you understand the basic rules, it's pretty simple. Then you can do the really fancy, weird, angular network stuff and expend off of it. Or you can pull off threads of it and do whatever with the threads and whatever jazz that some people like to do. But I like to follow the basic knots and cross them over in different things like soccer balls or grids or nets or whatever you want to call it because <laughs> it's just kind of it's just like something to do because I can't really get into my art when I don't have any ideas and I don't know I'm just sitting there doodling around and this seems like a neat thing or it struck me as a neat thing so you just they're like what are you drawing all these patterns for what's up with that <laughs> It's like a. Here are these. You're gonna look just with that outer thing. Draw these long, stretched out woods to cross over. So these cross over. Just like with the triangle. It's the same idea, just a different shape. And I did some neat stuff with this. Like I said, you can spell out the alphabet if you wanted to. If you had the time. <laughs> Where did the desire in the time? Or it's just something to do. Neat motives, borders. Or like you say, if you have the rope or the cordage or whatever, you can make your pot holder or macrame type thing. <laughs> or weave doilies, maybe. Maybe doilies are weird like this. It could be the case. You really like that in close up. <laughs> I'm sure they have a similar concept in their knitting. I wouldn't be too surprised. But it's just like this crazy thing. But I'm wondering if stuff like, uh, what do you call those amphoras or something? Those like big jugs that you see in all those ancient shipwrecks. I wonder if the ropes they used to hold those things. Cause they didn't, not all those big jugs had handles on. They had ropes tied around them and stuff. I wonder if they did rope work around to hold those jugs to keep them from falling or you know tied up. Like I said on the ship, or just carrying it in general to tie it to your pack mule or whatever. If they did fancy network like this to hold the amphoras full of uh, their wine or their oils or whatever, like in Roman times or whatever, or whoever the Romans traded with, <laughs> I wonder if they did stuff like this. I would not be that surprised, but it's like I don't see any examples that I know of. Let's tie this around. <laughs> I think this is the right name for those jokes. Name for is that it? You can see the crossover patterns. It's, it's not quite a radial symmetry, it's more like a spin symmetry. 
spin symmetry. Because if you notice, it's a rotation. It's not a, a mirroring. It's more of a so to follow the symmetry, right? You have it keep following the pattern. You have to spin it, not, not just mirror it. Pretty. I guess you could make jewelry like this. If you were silversmith or something, you could boss this pattern or something. I was almost thinking of getting that like clay that you bake and it turns into pewter and making stuff like this out of that. That might be cool. But where would I sell it? I guess there would be an art show or something. <laughs> I have to put time in learning that material. I remember seeing something like metal clay. It's almost like Sculpey, I guess. I like, caught a thing on YouTube like looking at sculpture stuff and you go, that looks neat. You start out with stuff like Sculpey and bake it and it turns like pewter metal stuff. <laughs> I might have to try it one time. Just make like medallions and stuff. If I could make money do this. Maybe. <laughs> Chris, tell you gotta draw the pattern, probably like beat me to the punch now. Alright. But you see the idea, it's just this concept of uh, doing different things with your knots. And like I said, you could do, do like a hexagons. The, what I did with the blue lines here, you can draw these in the hexagons or whatever, or circles, or and connect them in various ways. And by following these simple rules, you can get all kinds of neat designs and patterns. But I thought it'd just be neat to share it. It's, it's just fun. It's stupid. <laughs> it's fun. And now you know an interesting way to waste your time. And, uh, methodical and, uh, I don't know, just like a little rule set, like I explained it, you can do some really fancy art, so there you go, have fun with it, <laughs> there.